Welcome back to the continuing look at the preseason top 20 as defined by NASCAR Illustrated. I'm here with Jeff Owens, editor of SceneDaily.com. Of course, I'm Buzz Cutler. Both of us voted in this poll, and we're up to number 12. Kurt Busch came in at number 12, which is actually one position worse than where he finished in 2010. And I'm anxious to talk to you about Kurt Busch, because you and I were having a conversation in your office one day, and you said you thought he was one of the five best drivers in the garage. Oh, I don't think there's any question about that. I think he is as talented uh, as anybody out there. And we saw that, I think, when he was at Roush uh, Fenway Racing. I mean, he won a championship, he won all those races, and he could go wheel to wheel with anybody. Uh, and he did it on some of the toughest tracks out there, Bristol being one of them. He dominated that track, and he also won on a lot of others, too. So I think in terms of driving talent, I think Kurt Busch is as good as there is out there today. I mean, I think he's right there with Kyle and, and, uh, and that group. I just think it's his team right now that's not exactly uh, up to par. They're not uh, one of the top three or four organizations in the sport, and I think that's holding him back a little bit. So if you think in the Penske racing equipment isn't quite what it should be, is their consolidation from three teams to two going to help that regard, going to help them find some consistency? I think it could. Um, you know, when you're struggling a little bit anyway, struggling to get the right people in the right place, and, you, and your cars are just not that consistent, uh, more sometimes is not better. Uh, so I think by maybe cutting back to two teams, it might help them. If they had some really good uh, crew guys and good engineers focused on that third team, now you take them and you spread them out among the two teams, uh, I think it actually could help them. We saw a few years ago with Richard Childress Racing, they had four teams. They had just expanded. Uh, they put a fourth car on the, on the track with Casey Mears, and they had a terrible season. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was some thought at the time uh, that maybe spreading those resources out wasn't the right thing to do. They cut back to three. Last year they had one of their best seasons in a long, long time and almost won the championship. So I, I do think that can help them. Uh, but again, I think they got a long way, to, long ways to go. Now, the other issue, obviously, that Penske wrestles with is they're the only Dodge team on right. the circuit. Now, you can make the argument, well, that means Dodge can focus exclusively on them, but you could also make the counter argument that they just don't get enough data, they don't get enough information, because they don't have anybody else out there gathering that data. Which yeah. side of that equation do you fall on? You know, I think it's better to have some other teams to lean on, uh, and I think we've seen that in the Toyota camp. Uh, they've got a flagship organization. And, and Joe Gibbs Racing, that's one of the best out there. And I don't think you go over to Michael Walter Racing and Red Bull and talk to them, and they'll say, yeah, we have definitely been helped by Joe Gibbs Racing. So I, I think it's better to have some or other organizations because uh, you've got uh, teams looking in different areas, and if one of them finds something and hits on something, uh, they can bring it over and share it with the other Dodge teams and help everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw that last year uh, with Roush Fenway. Uh, they got help from uh, Richard Petty Motorsports, and you would expect it to be the other way around. But actually what happened last year is they found some things from Richard Petty Motorsports that helped them, and they turned things around. I think you got to have some other organizations like that to, to lean on sometimes, especially when you're way out in left field. And without that, you know, I think that hurts them a little bit. Yeah, so Kurt Busch um, showed flashes of brilliance. Obviously, he had that great run in May last season when he won the all-star race and the uh, 600 and then just didn't find that consistency that he needed to be able to continue winning throughout the season do you chalk that up to the equipment what does he need to do to get back into championship yeah. form yeah I, I just think you know and it's been that way ever since he's been there you know he'll have flashes where they're really good and they'll run up front they'll win a couple of races and then they'll fall off um, they just got to find some more consistency mm -hmm. uh, and they've got to hit on some things that really work for them it seems like they're constantly searching um, now you know I think uh, Steve Addington really helped him a lot last year coming over there as crew chief I think that was a very good piece to the the puzzle for them but we still saw a lot of inconsistencies and, and until they get the whole organization a little bit better uh, maybe get a little bit more leadership at the top I'm really not sure what they're missing right now but mm -hmm. there's something that keeps them from being a factor every single week and they've got to find that if they don't then then I think Kirk's gonna have the same type of year he's been having he'll win a couple of races 
Uh, but it would not surprise me to see him miss the chase. Well, I wonder if Travis Geisler moving into that director of competition role will give them that leadership up at the top that they may have been missing. It could. Uh, it, it could. We've seen before that it, that it often works when you take a crew chief and you put him in that position. Uh, a guy with an engineering background who can sort of look over everything. Uh, that could be the key that could help them. Uh, I definitely think they need somebody in that role because they've got a lot of talent over there. I mean, Steve Addington's a good crew chief. I like the move they made with Brad Keselowski, his teammate, bringing Paul Wolf up. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a lot of success last year in the Nationwide Series. That could help them if you got both cars running. But the problem with Penske is that you know they can't seem to get both cars running or three cars running. You know they had that uh, eight or ten years ago with Rusty Wallace and Ryan Newman. Uh, but since then, they just haven't been able to do it. You know, it's been hit or miss, and it's been one car, and that's been about it. So they've got to make some changes and make some progress with their whole structure and the whole organization to be able to give Kurt Busch what he needs. And if they can do that, I think they've got a driver. I actually think they've got two drivers now that can win races and possibly both make the chase. But they've got to make some leaps and some strides with that organization. All right. Well, that has been our look at Kurt Busch, part of our ongoing series looking at NASCAR Illustrated's preseason top 20. We're going to keep doing this day in and day out with Jeff and some other guys from Scene Daily from Illustrated from the Sporting News. So check back. Uh, I'm Buzz Cutler, Jeff Owens, editor of SceneDaily.com. Rowdy.com. Say it like it is. Say what like it is. Rowdy.com.